Welcome to the longest light in history. When you got here, you were 12, now you're 33. Copyright Tim, Me and My Shadow, 2023. Man, I am so technological. Now I have a remote. I actually had the remote all along. Kind of pays to look all the way through the box when you get something in the mail. I don't know. Call me crazy. Well, hello everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to the channel. I hope all you guys are doing well. It's a Saturday. It's a beautiful day. We're going to go out for just a little bit of a ride. I also wanted to try out my GPS. I know. I've heard from many of you saying that it's a waste of money. Your phone does the same thing. And you're right. Your phone does do the exact same thing. Even though your GPS on your phone can do the actual same thing as a you know dedicated GPS unit can do, there are several different reasons that I went ahead and got a dedicated GPS and have been looking for a dedicated GPS for a while now. Running my own business, all my customer information, all my contacts and everything are on my phone. So if anything happens to that phone, I'm kind of screwed. I mean, I have other records, obviously, but I'm kind of messed up as far as being able to access jobs, things like that. Now, of course, I can do it on my computer as well. Even though I have access to my work files and jobs and things like that on my computer at home and I have backups and things like that so yes honestly if I something like I lost my phone or damaged my phone or something like that I wouldn't be completely screwed but there's some truth to be said about how damaging your riding with your phone out on a mount can cause now I know you can get the quad lock and they have the buffer thing and stuff like that but researching into it and stuff like that I've heard that even then you really still run into issues with all the vibration and stuff over a certain period of time another reason that I really wanted the GPS is I'm looking at expanding out my riding from just street riding to doing some off-road that's going to be happening hopefully within this coming year and I get out of this guy's blind spot there we go and so with that in mind as well I wanted something that I should be able to keep track of trails and things that I want to ride who knows maybe I may get adventurous someday and try an actual BDR and if I do that then I want something that I can easily transfer files over to that's dedicated to the bike. I'm just saying for me it works. So I'm trying this out. Also, if you'll notice, I have it plugged in to my power supply on my handlebars as opposed to the way I showed you guys in the video earlier where I had it wired back as a pigtail to my battery. And I've got to be honest, I'm an idiot. The pigtail didn't work. Now, I had good connection, but for some reason the pigtail did not work. And I got this really cool remote that I can start and stop the camera with. It's almost hands-free. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. So I wanted to test this out as well. Matter of fact, There we go. I'm such an idiot. Like, you guys could see that. I shut it off and turned it back on. <laughs> anyway, the remote's cool. It allows you to change functions on the ch on the camera itself without having to fumble around up here with the buttons and stuff like that. I can just keep it in my pocket. I can turn it off, turn it on when I want to. 
Uh, it's really, really a nice feature. Um, I can also change modes on the camera. I can change it to time lapse with the remote. I can change it to from video to just taking pictures. All different kinds of things I can do. And I can also, one of the main reasons I really love this remote is the fact that I can run my uh, Insta360 camera. Um, wherever it's mounted on the bike, I can turn it on, turn it off, all that with just the click of a button. So, what's up, brother? Get that little thing going. And don't wave. How cool is that? What is it with people well, not motorcycle waving? Is it because I'm on a Honda Shadow? And I'm not cool enough to be in the club? Probably. It's funny when I look at this motorcycle and I look at all the different things I add and each time seems kind of like a new chapter, right? I mean, not necessarily just a new GPS or whatever, but when I put different mirrors on, when I put a seat on, whatever, you, you get a feeling that you're going to roll back into that car behind you. <laughs> wow. But you get this feeling... That, at least I do, that, that a time has passed, that you have come to uh, a new chapter in the bike's history. And maybe it's just because I've owned this bike for 14 years and um, I notice things like that because I have not had a different bike in so long that anytime I add something new, and I've said this before, anytime I add something new to this motorcycle, it almost makes it feel like a brand new motorcycle again. I'm like a kid with a new toy. I am very seriously looking at several different options for my riding future. If you care to know, I'm looking at definitely, seriously, doing off-road. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to get myself some kind of a dual sport. And I've looked, I've even looked at the Chinese-made Hawk dual sport motorcycles. But I just can't seem to pull the trigger. I mean, you can go on Amazon. They're little 250cc bikes. And you can go on Amazon and you can get one for like $1,400. And the reviews I've read are they're like, meh, you know, they're all right. They're, and, you know, a lot of people that are dedicated dual sport riders that do maybe BDRs and off-road stuff are like, oh, no, don't even touch that bike. Don't touch it. You're going to be unhappy. But I also watch videos from people that have never ridden dual sport before, like me, that have never really done any kind of off-road. And they're saying it's great. It's a great way to start out. It has like hardly, not a ton of power. So I think it only has like 14 horsepower, something like that. Just very, very little on the power. But it's made from China. I know some people are like, hey, don't let that stop you. It's going to be fine. Other people are like, are you crazy? If you're used to any kind of reliability like a Japanese bike or American-made bike, you're going to be sorely disappointed. But I may want to wait. Save up my pesos a little longer and get something Japanese like a Kawasaki KLR. 650 or something like that but I've been definitely seriously looking into it and if you guys have any off-road experience at all let me know what your first bike was what would you recommend would be a great bike to just start out on you know and I'm not talking about BDRs I'm not talking about expert trails I'm or single track I'm talking about just farm roads just gravel dirt um stuff like that so I'll let you guys know um, I also had a conversation with my butt not too long ago again remember how butt was bothering me a lot you know talking to me all the time telling me hey it's time to change seat well I hadn't heard from butt in a while and I was like I wonder how butt's doing so I asked him how you doing butt and he was sleeping while I was riding. That's how comfortable my butt is. I know that there are many of you that 
are definitely concerned about how my butt feels. <laughs> so, I thought I'd throw that in there. That the uh, Mustang seat is working properly. What else? I, I could talk more about exactly what's coming. Actually, by... Alright. Again, full disclosure. I should have had something new to show you guys today but because Amazon is slow this time of year I guess I won't have it to show to you guys until next week and no it's not a new motorcycle or anything like that yet it's something for this bike which is desperately desperately needed you guys haven't heard me talk about it too much but it's something that has been bothering me for quite some time and I need to get it fixed and I will definitely be showing you guys that as soon as I get the equipment also um, I can't wear them yet but my wife and I actually went out and bought new motorcycle boots. We bought ourselves a Christmas gift. And I was all excited. I have to, I'll show them to you guys, but I can't. Again, because my wife's like, no, they're for Christmas. You cannot wear them till after Christmas. I'm like, what do you mean? I tried them on and everything. So that's coming as well. I don't know if you guys are anything like me. I swear to God, if I could just have all my Christmas gifts now I'd be happy there are so many memories made on motorcycles and it doesn't really matter what motorcycle it is as long as it's your bike right you can remember the day that you got it you can remember the first time that you took it out you can remember probably the first time you had a close call on it you can remember the first time you took a special friend or your wife or your child or somebody like that out on it like this seat this seat is a prime example I can remember riding this motorcycle for a well <laughs> the whole time I owned it with the stock seat and but calling me and telling me that you know he was uncomfortable a lot I just told Butt to suck it up and live with it. It's part of being a motorcycle rider. I never ever thought that it could be more comfortable. I'll be real honest with you. I thought that I had one of the most comfortable seats in the world, but I had no idea. So I can remember these things. So snippets. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I really want me to shut up now.